The story begins when a girl enters her high school, pondering that since she doesn't belong to a group, she prefers to be alone. However, it's not like she doesn't want to be with anyone special. Suddenly, her classmate named Makiba calls out to her, revealing her name to be Ukami, asking whether she is eating at the cafeteria. She responds with a simple yes and asks him the same question. They both head towards the cafe, choosing to have the fried chicken set. They manage to find an empty table in an otherwise thriving cafeteria when Makiba curiously inquires if she always eats here. Ukami answers that she usually goes to the convenience store. Upon being asked, he tells her that he forgot his lunch today. An uncomfortable silence lingers between them until Makiba breaks it by inquiring if she likes eating by herself. When Ukami affirms, he inquires if it isn't tasteless to eat alone. She responds that not precisely as the food tastes the same, even if she eats by herself. Makiba, admiring her independence, finds her cool in handling everything on her own. She somberly conveys that being alone is simply easier for her. He once again remarks that she's cool, but she replies, I am not too sure. Afterward, he decides to go to the counter, craving a cup of tea. Meanwhile, a flustered Ukami, wearing a mischievous grin, savors the thought that dining with Makiba makes everything taste much better. It can be seen that she has a soft corner for the boy, but our clever wolf knows better than to reveal her true emotions. Just then, Makiba returns, and inquires if she'd like some tea. He already has one for her, and she graciously accepts the gesture. As they settle into their seats, he comments on how delicious the cafeteria's food is. Meanwhile, Ukami suddenly sprouts a wolf tail, waging it happily while contemplating thoughts about Makiba being kind, and expresses her love for him. The next day, Ukami's friend invites her for a coffee at Starbucks, but she declines, expressing a desire to go home alone. Though her friend feels a sense of rejection, Ukumi explains that it's not about being cold but rather valuing her time. A while later, she encounters Makiba at his locker looking for something. He says that he wanted to try the new Starbucks drink, but the poor absent-minded boy wails that he forgot his wallet. Ukumi offers to pay for him, mentioning that she wanted the drink too. He thanks her, promising to pay her back. Casually bidding goodbye, she suggests to get her something next time. On her way, she ponders how she prefers spending time with Makiba rather than being all alone. For someone special is Makiba, whom she adores so much that even his forgetfulness seems cute to her. The next day, in the classroom, the teacher announces that he will change the seating arrangement by drawing lots. Ukami's friend dramatically bids farewell to her, wiping her fake tears. Ukami is not very excited about her seats getting changed because to her it's the same seat everywhere. Her devil-may-care attitude impresses her friend. Next, it's her turn to draw the lot, she closes her eyes and secretly prays that the chit has Makiba's number on it. Some days are meant for wishes to come true, and it's her lucky day as both she and Makiba have the same number 32 allotted. They both exchange the usual greetings. The ever-forgetful Makiba has forgotten his textbook, but the much-delighted Ukami is glad to share hers with him. Her wolf tail even pops out, wagging with joy because she's just that thrilled. She's practically wishing for this moment to last forever. The following morning Ukami, Wearing gym clothes enters her fitness center when a cheery voice from the TV waves through that the day is not all favorable for Capricorns in terms of love, so they must at all costs stay away from that divine emotion. A colleague points out that Ukami's love life is at its worst, but the ever cool lass shows a carefree attitude and remarks that she doesn't care about her horoscope. Later at school when Makiba greets her, she greets him back rather coldly because deep down those pangs of horoscope are still stabbing her and she has decided to avoid him for the rest of her day. She gets startled as the ever-innocent Makiba points out that she has some lint on her hair. She springs up from her chair, stating that it's fine, and leaves for the washroom. She stares at the mirror in dismay, wagging her wolf tail, as she ponders that despite her horoscope, she is still headed in the wrong direction. Yet again she thinks of her emotions for Makiba, and finally decides to shrug off this crap and act normal. When she returns, and asks Makiba if the lint is gone, and he responds affirmatively. She thanks him, and just then he comments that her two mismatched earrings look very cute on her. She expresses her gratitude to him. I'm pretty sure that she is blushing because it is not apparent on her face as it is covered by a face mask. But one can see that on being called cute by her favorite person on earth, she once again develops a wolf tail and wags it delightfully. Later, Ukami is out shopping with her friend mentions that the store is offering a limited edition candy available only at this location. The Ice Queen shows no interest as usual, causing her friend to be disappointed. However, 
she has gotten used to Ukami's sturdy moods. She sarcastically remarks that it must be really exhausting to move against the flow of society. Their conversation ends with Ukami's short reply. The next morning, as she enters the classroom, she notices the same candy on Makiba's table and is somewhat startled. He explains that these only come out at this time of the year. Curiously, he questions, isn't it tempting to buy these? She responds, I see. He then confesses that he doesn't know what to call it. She enlightens him, labeling it as a snob effect. He praises her for knowing all these things. He misunderstands that Ukumi has already developed a taste for these candies, so he offers her some, and remarks that it is important to eat food in season. Ukumi tries to tell him that limited edition doesn't mean that. She tries some, and admits that it's delicious. Later, she goes to that supermarket to find the same one that Makiba likes, but to her dismay, the sweet is not sold anymore. The next morning, looking unwell, Ukumi heads somewhere, when her friends invite her to play ping pong. But she declines, stating that she needs to visit the nurse's office. Her innocent friend suspects that the Ice Queen might be avoiding her, but Ukumi denies it. The other friend then questions if she's feeling unwell, but Ukumi clarifies that she simply needs to lie down. Upon entering the infirmary, she's taken aback to discover Makiba already seated there. She is so anxious that her eyes might actually pop out of their sockets. Makiba explains that he got carried away while playing basketball and accidentally stumbled. He informs her that if she's looking for the teacher, she isn't here. Ukumi suddenly notices his bruised hand and asks if it hurts too. Surprisingly, Makiba didn't notice that. She then disinfects his wound and then places a band-aid on it. He thanks her and says that she has been too nice to him. She tells him not to worry about it. After her little first aid operation is done, she decides to head back. He wonders why she was here in the first place. Just as she steps out, the nurse arrives and asks the reason for her visit. Ukumi answers that she was actually feeling sick, but somehow she is feeling much better now. She contemplates the amusing idea that if words possess the magical power of healing, then the simple, you are nice to me, did the trick for her. She also reflects that Makiba probably didn't notice her blush. But then again, how could he, especially when she's dressed up as the Batgirl? Later it's raining cats and dogs win. Her friend comments that it is really nice and quiet on rainy days. She asks Ukumi if she despises rain, and she replies, not really. Ukumi comments that she has been sleepy the whole day. She can see that so her perky friend suggests going to karaoke and getting all hyped up. However, as usual, the frozen princess refuses and declares that she's heading home. On her way out, she sees Makiba and inquires what happened. The ever-forgetful Makiba has forgotten his umbrella, but he comments the most beautiful line, getting wet in the rain is part of being young, the wolf girl. Without saying anything draws out her umbrella, offering to walk him halfway. Makiba proposes to hold it for them, and thanks her for helping him yet again. He remarks that rain is very exciting, but she replies that she is not sure about that. Hearing this, he wisely comments that maybe she is not that type. The ice melts slowly, and it suddenly dawns on her that she is actually sharing her umbrella with Makiba. She abruptly feels electricity flowing inside her body, pondering that she loves the rain. However, when mentions that they are sharing an umbrella, Ukumi returns to her icy self and replies that she didn't notice that. It can be seen that both the young hearts are thumping wildly but neither of them is expressive enough to control them. It's been a week since their seats were changed, and Ukumi wants to communicate more with Makiba. Despite sitting next to him, she has only said hello. As usual, the amnesic Makiba has forgotten his textbook and requests Ukumi to share it with him. Someday the guy is going to forget himself at home for sure, so Ukumi decides to grab this opportunity to have a conversation with him. He moves closer to Ukumi, and deep down her emotions hit a tornado, which is quite evident from her eyes widened behind that face mask. Either he is really dumb, or he is putting up an act because he asks her if he can move closer to her as he cannot see. But he does that after he is done shifting. Ukumi's expressions cannot be judged because of the cover, but her body can be seen quivering like a leaf, and her heart is thumping so hard that periodic ripples can actually be seen on her body. She decides to initiate a conversation, and she begins to speak only to realize that the forgetful boy is also a sleeping beauty. Helplessly, she watches him dozing off like a baby, finding him incredibly cute in his slumber. Despite knowing that it's a bit foolish, she feels an inexplicable urge to keep watching him like this forever. Love can make the most sensible ones drop on their knees, hence proved. Later while operating a vending machine, Makiba asks Ukumi standing next to him if she likes black coffee. 
She responds, I can drink it. He then blurts out that actually he wanted some juice but accidentally pressed the wrong button. It seems like the handsome hunk has wobbly fingers as well. They both cheer their drinks, and Ukumi takes her mask off revealing her face. When she takes the first sip her face wrenches due to the sheer bitterness in her mouth, and it appears that even she cannot tolerate black coffee, she just accepted it to impress him. She notices him staring at her intently, and wonders whether he is actually amazed by her, or if he seems to have guessed that she is forced drinking that black tar. He asks if he can take a sip. Ukumi cautiously hands him the can and he remarks that he feels that he has grown up since he last tried it. A panic-stricken Ukumi closes her eyes as Makiba is about to sip that black coffee. He gulps down the drink, and after a short pause, he officially declares that he still cannot drink that thing, and he seems visibly shaken. She has never seen him like that. It dawns on her that they have been indulged in an indirect kiss unconsciously. Blushing, she turns away. From that day onward, Ukumi develops a liking for black coffee. Another casual day at school, we see Ukumi sitting idly checking out her cell phone. Her best friend, whose name is finally revealed to be Sumika, places her hands on her eyes and asks her to guess who. Ukumi lets out a bored expression and guesses correctly. Of course, who else can actually tolerate her airs apart from the sweetest Sumika? She then invites her to have dinner with her, but Ukumi refuses saying that she has already eaten. This makes me wonder how Sumika is putting up with the Ice Queen emitting freezing airs as always. Sumika then asks her what she is listening to, and she replies that she has been listening to some band named No Matter. When Sumika squirms, showing a slight dislike towards the band, Ukumi comments that different people have different tastes. Her friend suggests that they must exchange each other's favorite band songs. Ukumi declines, saying that she usually doesn't listen to songs recommended by others. The good-natured Sumika agrees, and then Ukumi explains that it's because finding something on your own has its own charm and getting recommendations is boring. She agrees, and then leaves. Ukumi suddenly spots Makiba dancing to his tunes, all excited. He dances towards Ukumi, and sits beside her. She comments that his moves were pretty energetic. She can feel his intense stares at her, and she looks at him greatly puzzled. He expresses embarrassingly that he forgot that he was at school. But somehow when he listens to his favorite song, he cannot help but dance to its tune. He then recommends a song to Ukumi, and requests her to listen to the song if she doesn't mind. She readily agrees and grabs the opportunity. Makiba plucks out the earpiece from his ear, cleans it thoroughly, and gives it to her. She immediately takes it and places it inside her ear. She suddenly has a realization that they just shared headphones like a couple, and that makes her feel a little embarrassed with traces of happiness. The waves of Makiba's favorite song hit her eardrums, and she wonders why he feels so energetic, even though the song is actually a ballad. One fine day, Owagami finds Makiba sitting all alone on school stairs staring at empty space. She asks him about what he is thinking, and Makiba replies that he's spacing out. He is actually basking in the sun as that day's sun and wind are very nice. He then invites Ukumi to join him. She is dying to be asked by him, but all she does is to respond coolly, saying if he insists. She takes a glance at him, and thinks that it's just the two of them all alone when Makiba tells her that he is spacing out because of the sunlight. He asks her whether she is feeling refreshed by all this. Ukumi is already elated being alone with Makiba that she actually cared less about the sunlight. Makiba then discloses that he has one dream. He wants to live in a house with a veranda in the future, so that he can enjoy the sun like this whenever he wants. He then asks her about her dream. The Ice Queen replies that she has never thought about it, but deep down she has this life-changing dream of being Makiba's wife, wants to be with him when he is working from home, and wants to go shopping and on vacation with him all alone. She even goes beyond wanting to have a couple of children, a son, and a daughter with him. Her dream is endless, and she wants to say something to Makiba, but she is afraid he might find that boring. Meanwhile, he is enjoying the whiff of fresh wind and Ukumi keeps on looking at him thinking that she wants a future like this one. Makiba finally wakes up from his daydream and realizes that it is getting late. He apologizes to her for dragging her into this and the lady replies without any expression that the whole experience wasn't that bad. Makiba looks at her, and then exclaims that they must bask in the sunshine again someday. While her heart secretly roars that she wants it very, very much, and hilariously a tail reappears on her back wagging wildly, depicting her level of happiness. While Ukumi is picking up a can of drink from the vending machine, Sumika calls out to her. She asks what Sumika is doing as lunchtime is already over. Sumika remarks that she is pretending to be a lawbreaker by staying here and skipping class. 
she insists Ukumi to sit with her, which she reluctantly does. Sumika points out how she loves Ukumi's habit to grumble about what she requests, but then ultimately gives in. To her surprise, Sumika hugs her dearly and tells her that there are times when one just gets tired of it all. Aboard, Ukumi rolls her eyes at Sumika's comment and says that this isn't helping her at all. It can be seen that the more Sumika tries to cuddle her closely, the more Ukumi tries to withdraw from her. Sumika notices her repulsion and comments that skinship releases oxytocin that relieves stress. Ukumi remarks that she isn't feeling anything releasing any. She then clearly tells her friend that she doesn't like being clung to. Per Sumika immediately withdraws herself and feels thoroughly embarrassed. Ukumi tries to neutralize the situation, saying that if this gets Sumika to the class then she is fine with all that clinging. After a pause, Sumika asks her out, but she immediately refuses. It is then Makiba passes by with his friend Mamuri and asks them what they are up to. Sumika replies that they are pretending to be lawbreakers. Makiba displays his signature puzzled look. Sumika explains that she thinks that it is pretty much unlawful of them to loiter around a solitary place. Makiba is interested in joining them. However, Mamori warns him not to play along. Sumika then offers him a seat beside Ukumi, which Makiba graciously accepts. He perches besides Ukumi in such a way that there is zero space between them. Her heart begins to thump wildly due to this unusual skinship, and she feels as if her body is releasing massive quantities of oxytocin. Mamori warns Sumika not to teach Makiba bad things as if he is in kindergarten. She literally calls Mamori, his mom. Saved by the bell, he calls out to Makiba, who is fretting that he still needs to get ready for the class. Mamori asks him whether he got something to drink, but that he is a habitual forgetful person of course. Meanwhile Sumika also stretches out, feels thoroughly regressed, and heads out for the class. Ukumi touches her shoulders that touch with Makiba. Sumika suggests that they must do this every now and then. Ukumi agrees that once in a while is really okay. Secretly she admits that skinship is actually amazing, and yet again she comes along wagging her non-visible tail that depicts immense satisfaction. Later Makiba reminds her that they are on duty that day. When Ukumi admits she forgot all about it, he jests about her forgetfulness, adding that he's no stranger to it himself. Meanwhile she ponders that she hates lying to him but she has eagerly anticipated this event all week. She acknowledges her own substantial ego, recognizing the ongoing struggle between her outer facade and her inner self. Makiba then admits that even he forgot all about the daily duty until the teacher reminded him. He then informs her about the tasks they will be performing like giving commands to the class, wiping down the board, writing in the log, and then some odd jobs. Ukumi suggests that she would like to fill in the logs, he readily agrees and takes the job of giving commands, and suggests that they will be conducting the rest of the tasks together. In the class the teacher announces that whoever's on the day duty can hand back their notebooks. It's evident that the teacher only calls on Makiba for tasks like collecting notebooks and distributing handouts. In the end, Makiba asks Ukumi to help him wipe the board, but she insists on doing it alone. She apologizes to him for being paired with her because the teacher assigned him all the tasks and ignored her. She speculates that it's because of her unconventional appearance that teachers perceive her as unfriendly while they are comfortable with him. This surprises Makiba as he finds Ukumi very approachable. Hearing another compliment from him astonishes her, and she eagerly confirms with Makiba, like a love-struck puppy, whether he truly believes that she's easy to talk to. He readily affirms. Ukumi calls him a strange person, and he confirms if she thinks so. After finishing their duties they leave the class. He asks her again if she finds him strange. After a brief pause she replies, yes but in a good way. Finally admitting to one of his real characteristics. Makiba remarks that it's fine then. At home. Ukumi writes about her day in her diary. The next morning Ukumi is greeted by Sumika, and she decides to quiz her about herself. She comes closer to her, and inquires what is different about her today. Ukumi comments that she is as lively as always. However, Sumika points out that she wants to know what is different about her. When she receives no response, Sumika shows her the shoes she is wearing, and tells her that this is different about her. Lady, you should know that the very proud Ukumi always looks up while walking so her eyes couldn't catch the glimpse of your feet. Sumika comments that Ukumi will never be popular if she won't notice the slight changes in girls. Our wolf girl responds coolly that even though she is a girl, she doesn't notice small changes in people. Despite Ukumi's indifference, Sumika finds her very cool. And finally the Ice Princess tells her that her shoes are actually cute. Entering the class, she's startled to see Makiba wearing glasses. She wonders whether his eyes are getting weak or maybe he is just changing his appearance. 
she observes that either way he looks good. It is then Makiba asks Mamori whether he noticed something different about him. He should have asked this question from Mukami though. Mamori doesn't lift his eyes from his cell phone and remarks that maybe Makiba trimmed his bangs, surprising Ukami standing behind them. Makiba comments that Mamori loses 10 boyfriend points. He gets slightly offended, so Makiba suggests that he should start noticing slight changes. Mamori retorts that Makiba should stop acting like his girlfriend. He confesses that it is just that he cannot see anything without his glasses. Makiba nudges Mamori, engagingly signaling that he got it right. Makabe finally notices Ukami and asks her the same question. She immediately responds that he is wearing glasses. He makes a bing-bong sound, saying that it's correct. Mamori intervenes, stating that Hattie is acting weird today. Hearing this, Makiba voices that Ukami is the only one who actually pays attention to him, and he is glad that he isn't alone. Mamori replies with some agitation that he will get abandoned one day. He then explains that his dad gave him the glasses, and they block blue light. Ukami silently leaves and ponders that she really hopes that others don't notice that she is always staring so blazingly at Makiba. Girl, find out, do people actually notice you? The next day Mamori asks Makiba about his glasses, and the absent-minded Makiba replies that he forgot them, so nothing can cure his forgetfulness. The following day, on reaching school, Ukumi shuts down her umbrella and ponders that unexpectedly it started to rain heavily. It is then a fully drenched Sumika calls out to her and tells her that she is soaked to the bone. Ukumi reminds her that the forecast called for a downpour today. The pea-brained Sumika reasons that she always keeps a spare one at school, so she thought she would be fine. Ukumi tosses a towel to her and instructs her to dry herself before she catches a cold. While drying herself, Sumika finds herself falling more for Ukumi. She inquires with Sumika whether she has a spare jersey. When Sumika refutes, Ukumi provides her with her own jersey. It is then Sumika asks a very unusual question, if being wet makes her twice as hot. Ukumi responds that it makes her look like an idiot though. Sumika calls her a meanie, but is grateful for the jersey. Ukumi overhears Mamori's anxious voice, inquiring Makiba if he's alright. The unfortunate boy has forgotten his umbrella again and Ukumi regrets lending her only jersey to Sumika because Makiba is fully drenched as well. Before she can take any action, Mamori offers Makiba his own spare jersey and a towel. To Ukumi's astonishment, Makiba thanks Mamori and calls him a stud. Mamori also offers him a can of fully packed hot tea. In response, his friend hilariously comments that Mamori's status has gone up from being a stud to a mother. He thanks him again and refers to him as Mama Mori, causing him to be embarrassed. Makiba asks the same unusual question from Mamori whether being wet makes him look more appealing. Mamori rolls his eyes and orders him to change quickly. Little does he know that he's been keenly observed by two eyes behind that black mask. Upon inquiring, he cannot believe his ears when Ukumi pays him a compliment that she thinks he is quite appealing. A very emotional Makiba knew that she will get it. When he is gone, she secretly thinks that Makiba looked super hot, thanks to that heavy downpour. He repeats Ukumi's comment in front of Mamori, and he responds casually that she is just being nice to him. There's a cooking practice, and Ukumi has been placed in Makiba's team. She finds it a wonderful opportunity not only to talk to him, but also to carve a passage through his stomach. Mamori is startled by Makiba's glaring energy, but it is Ukumi who is feeling ecstatic as she will be cooking together with him. He ponders aloud where shall he use his skills first. Ukumi suggests that she'll peel while Makiba cuts. She asks him whether he cooks a lot at home, and he refutes completely. This makes Mamori wonder about his oozing confidence. Makiba offers the reason matching his intelligence limit that he has been going through some cooking manga, so he thinks that he has got this. He then tries to cut clumsily, obviously imitating the manga styles. He accidentally cuts his finger to Ukumi's frenzy. So, she immediately puts a band-aid on his finger. The guy obviously underestimated cooking. Mamori comments that there is no consistency to the way one cuts the veggies. Makiba defends Ukumi, and with a high tone asserts that he was the one who cut those veggies, and not Ukumi. Mamori explains with slight fury that he was actually referring to him. They both call it truce with some contempt of course. They are stupefied when they find Ukumi dicing and cooking without their negligible presence. She tosses and fries with great dexterity and in no time dishes out curry with finely chopped ingredients, a Caesar salad, minestrone, and some almond tofu. These all dishes are prepared as Mamori was on soup duty, Sumika on salad and desert duty, while Makiba's only had the hype duty. He comments that the curry looks good, 
She reasons that they make their curry at home with finely chopped ingredients that's why she is an expert in making it. An overly hyped makiba tastes a spoonful and exclaims that it tastes amazing to Ukami's delight. Hilariously, he orders to bring out the chef as if dining in some fancy restaurant. However, Mamori points out that they are supposed to be the chefs. Makiba thanks Ukami for saving his day and tells her that he can eat her cooking every day. She gives a devil-may-care expression but inside, her heart is dancing merrily because it sounded like marriage to her. She vows secretly not knowing that her face is flushing hard, that she will make him as much as he can eat, as she really loves him. Later, a day's Sumika rattles the locker by standing against it. She refers to Ukami as wild and wonders why she is staying after school because it is very unlikely for her. She explains that she is waiting for Rinka, who is in a committee meeting. Sumika is curious whether both Rinka and Ukami have plans. She replies that they both are planning to go to Starbucks. Sumika is surprised why she wasn't invited. She throws a huge tantrum, and even when Ukami tries to pacify her by inviting her at the moment, she wails that she doesn't want to be an afterthought. She wants a prim and proper, I will be delighted if you came with us kind of invitation. However, Ukami is not someone who can actually put up with someone's tantrums or airs, so she wishes Sumika a safe journey home. She regains her composure immediately thinking that she might have gone too far in being obnoxious. They both hear two girls talking about the most eligible guys to date in their class. One of them suggests Mamori as she feels he's really hot. The other one agrees but points out that he seems a little intimidating. Sumika points out secretly at the girls, mentioning that they are talking about love and inquires if she want to try doing that sometime. But the snob Ukumi couldn't care less, plus she adds that it's not ethical to eavesdrop. Her attitude mesmerizes Sumika but Ukumi says that it is normal behavior. Suddenly one of the busy bees refers to Makiba, and immediately our glacial empress's ear perks up to twice its size to catch the desired sound waves. The busy bee keeps on complimenting Makiba that he is tall and easy to talk to, also he seems like a very nice guy. Ukumi's heart catches fire when, she learns that even other girls in class are also into Makiba. But then the blazing fire is cooled, when one of the girls begins to say that she cannot imagine anyone falling in love with Makiba, as he seems like a kid. Another one chips in that he has this annoying habit of spacing out a lot plus is very much absent-minded, so in that case he is not reliable at all. A new kind of lava boils inside Ukumi, but then there is a loud bang of a locker being slammed, and a furious Makiba yells at the girls, for saying mean things about him. The busy bodies get baffled at Makiba's sight as they were not aware of his presence at the premises. But they don't stop, and keep on buzzing that one can never know what's going on in Makiba's mind, and also they have never seen him smile despite being full of energy. He reprimands them for being inconsiderate, and the girls feeling some remorse decide to flee. In no time Rinka comes out from the same room from where Makiba appeared earlier, a wave of suspicion crosses Ukumi's heart. Poor Makiba is really hurt by those unkind words. So Rinka invites him to their trip to Starbucks. Sumika is all excited, but it can be seen that Rinka is not very pleased with the idea of Sumika joining them. Makiba agrees to join and then Ukumi blurts out nervously to him that he is very charming. Makiba graciously thanks her as this will greatly help him boost his morale. However, Ukumi is secretly lauding herself for revealing a fraction of her emotions to Makiba. We see that Fuyuko is heading to eat lunch outside as it's nice out. Sumika wants to join her as well. Ukumi refutes, saying that she wants to eat all alone. Sumika calls her a meanie, and then asks Rinka whether she also wants to eat lunch with her too. Rinka affirms. Ukumi readily invites them, which makes Sumika remark that she is only mean to her. She then comments that it has gotten warm outside. Whenever one thinks about spring, it's all bugs and pollen grains. Ukumi comments that there are plenty of other things as well. Suddenly a butterfly flutters by, and lands on Rinka's head. It can be seen that a terrified Ukumi moves back as a reflex action, and Sumika guesses that she is really bad with bugs. She tries to regain her composure, as an ice maiden must never melt at any cost, and says that bugs never interest her. She adds that it's for both their sakes that she tries not to get involved with bugs and humans more than necessary, right as if the bugs would care. Sumika brings her back to the ground by insisting that she is actually bad with them all. Sumika leaves to buy some juice, and asks Ukumi grab a spot for them. In solace, she reminisces about those moments she spent with Makiba while basking in the sunshine, and wishes that those moments would come again. Suddenly, an unfortunate butterfly comes fluttering by, and lands on the disputed territory of Ukumi's head. She tries to keep her calm and tries not to move. It is as if she is completely frozen to her seat. 
Suddenly, McKee becomes along and spots the butterfly on her head. He tells her that he is going to be touching her head for a second, and then boom, the butterfly takes off instantly. He also realizes that she is really bad with bugs, and poor girl is embarrassed to the core. He comments that he might have gotten to witness something unexpected, and that sinks Awagami further into the ground. After he leaves, she touches the spot on her head where he has touched her earlier, and the wolf girl begins to tremble with mixed emotions of embarrassment and ecstasy. Later her friends return, and Sumika asks Ukumi whether she is interested in someone. Shay's surprised why Sumika asked that question out of the blue. She reasons that she has just realized that Ukumi and she have never talked about love. When Ukumi shows no interest in the conversation, Sumika includes Rinka as well in this discussion. They ask her about her first experience of falling into love, and while Ukumi cannot think of anything significant, she wanted to marry her dad, but Sumika reveals that it doesn't count. Ukumi explains that in grade school she used to hate boys for being loud and obnoxious, and in middle school, she was so shy that she had problems talking to girls let alone boys. So when Rinka and Sumika give her such pitiful looks, Ukumi is puzzled, but then her friends embrace her, assuring her that now she has them. Sumika comments that Awagami's love is yet to come. Sumika comments that if by chance Ukumi finds her first love then she must confide in her, so that she can poke some fun at her, like she doesn't know the Ice Maiden with her icy cold emotions frozen inside her heart. Rinka remarks that Ukumi is not popular with the guys, so she must do something about that. She retorts icily that it's not that she is going to die for not having a boyfriend. Suddenly it dawns on Sumika that lately she has been pretty chummy with Makiba. Sumika suspects that she might be secretly going out with him. Little does she realize that drums are being banged inside Awagami's heart on hearing Makiba's name. After a short meaningful pause, Ukumi refutes her allegations and says that she is not going out with him. Quite unexpectedly Makiba appears, insisting to the girls that it's his seat beside Ukumi, and just then Sumika comments that think of the devil and Makiba is here. Rinka asks him whether he wants to talk about love with them. He readily agrees to Ukumi's discomfort. He confesses that there is a senpai in the soccer club that he is interested in. Sumika and Rinka are curious why Makiba is joining from the girl's side. He then asks Sumi, Chan about her love interest, and she tells him that if he means someone getting on her nerves, and points towards him. He then asks Rinka, and she tells him that she will not make the same mistake again. Suddenly the bell rings and sadly the lunch hour is over. Both Rinka and Sumika flee for their next class, as they want to avoid the beast. He then turns to Ukumi but is met with a long, deep spell of silence. He apologizes to her for ruining her love talk, but she remarks that it was mostly Sumika chattering away like a monkey. Makiba tells her that they will take their love talk revenge from the girls the next time, but Ukumi shows no interest so the topic dies its death. But secretly she knows that the only thing she will be talking about would be Makiba, and she might accidentally make a confession. Still she would love to hear his love talk no matter what. The next day, Rinka and Sumika are looking for their beloved Oagami to have lunch with her, but Makiba tells them that she left as soon as the bell rang. Sumika curses that lone wolf, as she really wanted to be with her. Soon she settles down with Makiba and Mamori when quite predictably Makiba forgot her lunch. So he decides to head for the cafeteria. Soon, poor Mamori is left alone sandwiched between Rinka and Sumika, Lord saves his head. Meanwhile Makiba encounters Ukumi at the cafeteria, and she assumes that Makiba has yet again forgotten to bring something to eat. To that cherry on the top, he asks innocently that how does she know, and whether she is a psychic. Soon they buy their respective lunches, and Makiba points out at the spot in the back open. But then he realizes that she might prefer to be alone like always. She ponders that she was all ready to eat with him, but says that she will, but she doesn't mind if Makiba doesn't mind, sitting with her. He thanks her for letting him join her because he gets really lonely when he's alone. Makiba strikes a conversation with Awagami, asking her whether she actually prefers to be a lone wolf. She replies that rather she finds it easier to be all by herself. She tells him that stuff like reading the room and jumping in, and then paying attention to stories that she doesn't care about, all of these agonize her. Makiba is readily impressed and calls her a cool customer. On the contrary, she has been thinking that being with caring people like Rinka and Sumika isn't that bad. Out of the blue, he asks her whether she is okay talking to him. When she shows a puzzled expression, he explains that he knows that sometimes he says weird stuff, pondering that Mamori always points out. So, he inquires if it got to her. Ukumi lets out a loud chuckle, and poor Makiba becomes self-conscious again, wondering if he might have said something bizarre again. A beautiful smile lightens up Ukumi's face, 
and she assures him that he is really easy to talk to. A mesmerized Makiba stares at her face and comments that he has never seen Ukumi laugh like that before. He then offers to have lunch with her like this some other time as well, and a delighted Owagami agrees readily. The next morning she spots Makiba, but before approaching him, she takes out a vanity case from her bag, checks her image to make sure she is looking okay. Then with a very dazzling smile, under her mask, she greets Makiba. She is elated that they both bumped into each other on their way to school. One morning Makiba frantically approaches Ukumi and asks whether she has brought her math and English homework. He asks her to submit as the teacher has assigned him the duty to collect all homework, which the poor lad is painstakingly performing by carrying the heavy load. He hilariously admits that he has been punished for forgetting his homework, and the teachers are usually waiting to pounce on that kind of opportunity to make him perform errands for them. Ukumi offers to share his load by half because she feels that it will be dangerous if he tripped and fell. Makiba lets out a weak protest, saying that it is his punishment, and the ever-noble Ukumi says that they must bear it together. Makiba feels thoroughly indebted to her. After delivering them to the staff room, he thanks her for saving him, but he feels that it would have added spice if he had actually fallen. Ukumi looks at him as if he has lost his mind and tells him that it's really dangerous and he must not say stuff like that. Now before Makiba could react, she disappears from his sight, but he finds her sitting on the ground in an awkward position. Poor Ukumi has slipped accidentally on the floor due to some water on the floor, but Makiba is feeling guilty as he feels that he made her fall. He anxiously asks her whether she can stand, and also if it hurts her somewhere. She gives him an intense stare, and assures him that she is really okay as she just slipped a little. Makiba gives her a hand so that she can stand on her feet, and comments that nothing gets to Ukumi. Later, he decides to find a rag to wipe off the water as that can be dangerous to others. Meanwhile, Ukumi is staring at her hands as she held his hands, and her cheeks becomes tinted with blush, though camouflaged by that mask. She secretly cries to herself about how much she adores Makiba. When he returns with a rag, she immediately returns to her old icy self and offers to clean the water. But deep down she feels great respect for him taking time to remove hurdles in other people's lives. She ponders that lone wolves do not associate with any groups and prefer to act on their own, but that does not mean that they never wish to be around others. Next, we see that the girls are heading towards their basketball class, and Sumika encourages Ukumi to do her best. She tells Sumika that she also needs to put in some effort as well. Sumika refutes, and says that she is not made for those sports that require running. Owagami then encourages Rinka to play as well. However, she makes an excuse that she is just an observer. Ukumi tells her that there are no such thing as observers for classes. Rinka tries to get away by becoming a personal cheerleader of Ukumi in order to raise her spirits. She tells them that she is going to take it easy as she has worked today. So, when Rinka calls her lazy bones, Ukumi retorts that those are big words coming from her mouth. Suddenly, Makiba and Mamori pass by, and Makiba comments that the girls are having basketball today. Ukumi observes that he is unable to walk properly, and Mamori is helping him walk. She is actually worried about him, and Makiba tells her that he got too carried away in his table tennis match, that's why he slipped, and twisted his ankle. He then inquires excitedly whether the girls are playing matches. Sumika replies that only Ukumi is playing, while Rinka and she are on the cheer duty. Mamori points out that cheer duty is nothing. Makiba then asks Ukumi whether she is good at playing sports. She replies humbly that she is average. He comments that he loves sports but he is pretty clumsy. He adds that he really loves people with good reflexes, he is so engrossed in his own gloom that he doesn't notice someone staring at him so lovingly. Soon it's Ukumi's turn to play basketball, and Makiba roots for her. The girl tells him pompously that she has her own cheering squad, so she is going to give it her all. The trio looks in great admiration when she skillfully dribbles the ball and then shoots backward into the basket. All except Mamori clap and cheer for her, while Mamori exclaims that all are being completely obnoxious. But Ukumi has eyes and ears only for her handsome hunk, who remarks that she is really cool. Fuyuko and Sumika are sitting face to face when Rinka appears out of nowhere and suggests they do a psychological test. Sumika comments that came out of the blue. Ukumi also remarks why Rinka suddenly wants to do such a test. Rinka begins the test without paying any heed to them. She turns to Sumika and tells her to assume that she has gotten acquainted with a foreigner. Rinka mentions that there is one thing the foreigner doesn't like about her. She then gives her three options, frequent drinking and partying, she has completely opposite views on things, or obsession with branded goods. She chooses option two. 
Rinka then turns to Awagami, but she is not interested, so she makes a pass. Rinka then points out to Ukami that this test also determines one's sociability, and if she doesn't answer this means that she has zero sociability. Sumika then inquires about the answers to the test, and Rinka tells her that one, you wear your heart on your sleeve and like to mingle. Two, you're the type to open your heart once you get to someone. Three, you are the type to never open to others. While they are chatting, Makiba comes along and tells Rinka that she is sitting on his seat like always. She coolly tells him that school property belongs to everyone. He immediately apologizes for being arrogant. Sumika invites him to join the psychological test they are taking. He immediately agrees, however Mamori takes a pass. Rinka comments that Mamori is one of those types, he gets furious, but then Makiba tries to calm him down. Rinka then gets to the next question. A fairy blows its whistle as it leaves the port. How many blasts does it make? And how long do they last? Sumika answers that since she doesn't want to create disturbance, only a tiny toot will do. Meanwhile, Makiba gives a very ridiculous answer that actually goes above everyone's head. He then asks Ukami to answer the question, and Sumika remarks sarcastically that now Awagami will definitely answer. She wonders whether being called unsociable actually gets to her. Awagami lets out a big no, and ponders secretly that she is playing only for Makiba. Rinka elaborates that this test correlates to how deeply, and often one wants to kiss. The trio lets out its respective emotions, because previously it was Makiba, who said that the fairy must toot as many times and must blast loudly. Rinka even calls him a pervert, but Makiba protests that he is innocent, and he didn't do anything. Ukami breaks into cold sweats when a part of Makiba's personality is revealed to her. Poor Makiba hides his face, thinking that now nobody is going to marry him, and it is then Mamori tells him sarcastically that everything's good. Later Makiba informs Mamori that from now onwards he'll be the cool guy. Mamori is puzzled by his notion. He's hit by a sudden realization that he is in high school and all, so it's high time he must change into a cool guy. Mamori makes a historical statement that cool guys don't need to change themselves. Mamori lets him down, saying that it was over before it began for Makiba. He gets fired up and asks Mamori that if he's holding a grudge against him then he must spit it, and soon both begin to rattle and argue. Their heated argument is overheard by Ukami, who greets them. Makiba asks her whether he should become a cool guy. She tries to rephrase his words that maybe he wants to settle down. Mamori chips in that it's quite impossible for him to settle down. Makiba thinks that Mamori is way too negative, and he asks him to suggest some ways to become cooler. Hilariously, Mamori rips off a piece of tape and places it on Makiba's mouth. Ukami thinks that Mamuri came with a physical solution. It can be seen that even with the tape on, the garrulous guy cannot stop muffling and mumbling. Makiba doesn't have any reason to become cool, he seems completely clueless about what he actually wants in his life. Ukami pauses for an instant, and then explains to him that there is no reason he must force himself. She thinks that he's fine the way he is. He thanks Ukami for bringing him into senses. Even Mamori is forced to admit the sensibility of Ukami. However, deep down our lone wolf is thinking that any variety of Makiba is acceptable to her. The next morning Sumika informs Owagami that a guy from the class next door wants her line. She refuses flatly as she doesn't want to get a text from a stranger. Sumika encourages her to mingle with that admirer. But Ukami is adamant that she wants to keep her info as private as possible. Sumika is thoroughly impressed. Meanwhile, an exuberant Makiba informs Mamori that he got a brand new smartphone. As usual, he isn't interested and just says, how nice, that makes one wonder why they are even friends. Makiba is insulted and he asks Mamori to pay more attention to him. Mamori tells him not to act like his girlfriend. Turned down by him, Makiba turns to Owagami and shows her his new phone. She pays a compliment, how nice, and Makiba advises Mamori to be more like her. However, a smart Alec Mamori retorts that they both gave the same answer with the same tone of voice. Makiba is not surprised that he wasn't able to detect the difference. A forever idol Makiba asks both Ukami and Mamuri to repeat the phrase in their respective tones. They both comply and Makiba insists that there is a vast difference in the way both said it. He then warns Mamuri if that's how he is going to be, then he will look for someone else. Mamori couldn't care less, glances at Ukami, and hopes that he finds someone else soon. Akami's heart skips a beat, while Mamori tells her that she must point out to Makiba when he's being obnoxious. She responds that she doesn't mind. Suddenly, Makiba remembers something and asks Awagami to exchange line with him. Mamori can feel her uneasiness and asks Makiba to stop bothering her. She surprises them by handing over her phone to Makiba so that he can note down her line number. 
After the school ends, she walks towards a solitary place, and then becomes all flustered and excited because she changed information with him. She dances like a little girl, and wonders whether it would be okay to text him. In class, Makiba is trying to take a photograph of Mamori, using his new cell phone. However, Mamori comments that Makiba doesn't have his permission to capture his likeness. Makiba reasons that he is taking his picture because he just bought a new cell phone, and he didn't have anything saved in it. That's why he is feeling lonely. It can be seen that he has tried to capture Mamori by all angles. But every time, the back of his head is captured. Mamori advises him to take permission before taking anyone's photograph. Soon, he spots Oagami and hesitantly asks her whether he can photograph her. He reasons that he wants her to be a part of his memory. She is conquered by all means and permits him to photograph her. He saves her picture and shows it to Mamori, who remarks that Makiba has a sheer talent to master the art of getting a picture completely blurred. The pea brain Makiba thinks that he being is lauding, so he literally appreciates him. Mamori retorts that he was using sarcasm. Makiba then poses besides Oagami and asks Mamori to photograph them to her hysteria. Soon Rinka and Sumika also join them for the photograph. Sumika's excuse to join is that something fun was going on so he joined. Meanwhile, Rinka cannot tolerate the fact that Ukumi's picture is taken without her. Makiba compliments Mamori's photography skills and decides to send it to everyone. Rinka suggests him to make a group, but Mamori mentions to exclude him. Still, Makiba sends him a request. Meanwhile, Sumika tells Ukumi that she thought she was against her picture being taken. However, the woman with jumbled up emotions declares that she will not make a fuss about a picture. The girls decide to take one together. Back at home, Ukumi keeps on glancing at the photos she clicked with Makiba that day and gets emotionally charged up every time as her wolf tail wags excitedly. Mamori and Makiba were also able to take a good picture. One morning Ukumi is at her house where she is wooing her dog, Yuki. Her brother Tuya comes along and greets her. He tells her that he was up the whole night completing his university assignment. He is busy attending a call when Yuki begins to pace all around him. Fuyuko is observing Yuki's movements and then calls out to Tuya that Yuki is trying to greet him. However, he asks Yuki to hold on as he wants to reply to a message urgently. Fuyuko coaxes Yuki to come to her instead as Tuya's reply is more important to him. Tuya irritably refers to her as an evil stepmother. A while later, she receives a message from Makiba, asking whether she has a husky for a dog. Actually, she has used Yuki's picture for her DP, so Makiba thought he should comment and ask her about the dog. When she sees Makiba's message on her phone, she immediately dies for it neurotically. He says that he bought a toy for his Pomeranian, and it turns out that it is meant to be for large dogs, so he thought Husky might like it. Pangs of jealousy sweep over her because her most adored Yuki is getting a gift from her beloved Makiba. Now, the Husky is trying to poke her but Fuyuko is fully engrossed in Makiba's conversation. Tuya tries to point out to her that Yuki wants her attention, however. This time she tells Yuki to wait for a second as her message is very important. It is then Tuya decides to avenge her for previously letting him down in front of Yuki and calls out to his dog that Fuyuko's messages are more important to her than Yuki. A while later, she pets and coddles Yuki telling him that Makiba is giving him a toy. She seems more excited as her tail wags faster than her dog, and her flushed face is the evidence for that. We see Ukumi walking Yuki down a road, when she hears a faint bark. A cute little Pomeranian appears in front of them panting heavily. She notices that the dog is wearing a leash, so she wonders where its owner might be. The Pomeranian begins to wag its tail excitedly on her sight. Ukumi closely examines the dog and finds it familiar. Suddenly someone calls out the Pomeranian's name, Watami, meaning cotton candy. Soon a ragged and tattered Makabe appears asking Watami to stop dragging him through the bushes. Hilariously, when Yuki sees Makiba in such a state, she hides behind Ukumi in fright. Ukumi was not expecting to meet him on weekends. Makiba asks whether she always walks her dog on weekends. She affirms that she walks her down every weekend, while her parents walk him throughout the weekdays. Makiba suggests they take walks together on the weekends. Without thinking, she agrees, but then something strikes her that just now, they effortlessly made plans to hang out on the weekends. Makiba asks her whether he can pet Yuki, on her permission, he begins to politely pet Yuki to her amusement. Makiba becomes emotional, and is on the verge of tears because Yuki is letting him pet so readily. Poor Makiba is so touched that he blurts out that ever since he was little, animals, and young kids have never respected him, he got kicked and bitten a lot. He then gives an example of Watami 
and how roughly she treats her master. He appreciates Yuki for being a good girl. Soon, he departs, till they meet next time. Instantly, Ukami hugs and pets Yuki as because of her. Now she can meet Makiba on weekends as well. One can notice an almost amused expression on Yuki's face. Ukami regrets that she should have worn something cuter if she knew, and not just jeans and shirt. At the end of school, Makiba meets Ukami in the locker room. Both are heading home. He offers to walk her home as their paths are similar. She replies with an expressionless face that she doesn't mind. However, her heart is rejoicing on that offer. During their walk, Makiba tells her how his teacher called him a chicken meaning bird-brained, just because he forgot his homework again. But then he replied to the teacher that he was not a chicken coward at all. Ukumi is secretly amused because Makiba has tried to respond to the teacher with an American-style joke. Unexpectedly, he begins to stare at her, and then inquires if she ever burst out laughing. She refutes immediately saying she has never done that. He confesses that he has always found her so cool and her facial expression never really changes. How is that possible when the face is always behind that mask? Makiba adds that despite the way he looks, he is always very expressive. Ukumi tries to test him, and she calls out three of the various moods like being happy, mad, or sad, and asks Makiba to display expressions accordingly. Somehow the same dumb expression is displayed on his face for each of the moods, and he thinks that he is doing amazingly. Ukumi tries very hard to stifle her laugh, and thinks that Makiba looks so cute with all those tiny changes. So when he turns to her, she immediately reverts to her stoic self without any traces of her previous expression. He doubts that Ukumi was smiling before. She strongly refutes but is unable to meet his eyes. He stares at her intently as if trying to read her face, but Ukumi covers her face and tells him that it's really humiliating for her when he tries to stare at her like that. He mocks if that counts as some kind of harassment. Ukumi tells him off factly that this is for her to decide, but secretly her heart is dancing in joy as her invisible tail emerges again and begins to wag wildly. No matter what, she always feels at peace when Makiba is around her, and she knows that they are moving on at a slower pace, but still, she wants to get closer to him. Quite oblivious to her surroundings, she fails to notice that people are talking about Makiba and her, being always spotted together. The busybodies are gossiping about whether they both are going out. The next morning Makiba's classmates call out to him. He greets them in a western style that's quite out of the blue for them. One of his classmates, Tanaka mentions that he happened to see him the previous day, and he wonders whether he and Ukumi. Makiba chooses not to answer and turns away. Ukumi notices him and guesses that he is in a good mood. Suddenly a couple of girls surround her and ask for her time. One of them directly asks her whether she is going out with Makiba, as they both saw them the previous day going home together. They thought maybe she was testing some waters or something. Ukumi surmises with a sigh that the rumors have begun to prevail all around the school. She clarifies their position and refutes that Makiba and she are not going out, to the girl's disappointment. She explains that the previous day, they happened to bump into each other while heading home. The girls are certain that they noticed some kind of chemistry between the two, but then they apologize to Ukumi for bringing up something weird, and they leave still having doubts in their minds. Finding solace, Ukumi's heart begins to pound heavily in her chest, and her eyes widen ready to pop out. The girls actually caught her off guard, and she really hopes that she was not panicking. Suddenly Makiba enters the classroom, but when he glances at her, he turns away immediately without greeting her, to her surprise. She can feel that something is off, or maybe she is thinking too hard. Here I am. No, it's been a while. I